want to create a procedural skybox in Unreal, then you are at the right place. In this video, I will create a simple skybox from the scratch in Unreal Engine 5. I am Digvijay Gohil and you are watching Unreal Shader series. Let's go. Alright, I have an empty scene here. Now first I will add a sphere mesh. Let's call it sky sphere. Let's reset it and I will set its scale to 1000. Then here let's search for SM sky sphere mesh. Then I will create a material. Let's call it skybox. I will assign it to my sky sphere and double click to open it up. Now the first thing is I will go to this details panel and expand this material slot and in the shading model I will select unlit because I don't want my skybox to interact with lights. Then I will create a world position node. It will give me the position of each pixel of my skybox in world space and I will use this vector 3. And vectors have a length or magnitude and a direction. I don't care about length so I will take this output and feed it into normalize node. Normalize node will turn my vector into a unit vector or direction only vector. Then I will split it using split components node. And in Unreal, up axis is this Z axis. So I will take this B or Z component. Let's just visualize it. So basically I will have positive values at the top and negative values at the bottom. At the very top I will have value of 1 and it linearly goes up to negative 1. Now I don't want negative values and I would also like to control this blend. For that I will create a smooth step node. Take this B and feed it into the value. Now you must know the smooth step function inside out and I do have an entire video about it. You should definitely check it out. But just a TLDR, smooth step function will return 0 if this value is less than this min and it will return 1 if this value is greater than this max. And the values that falls between min and max will be interpolated using Hermit interpolation. And I can control this blend by adjusting this min and max. Now I want to control this max values from the details panel so I will create a scalar parameter. Let's call it zenith blend. Give default value of 1 and take its output and feed it into the max socket. You can also do the same thing for this min but I'm happy with 0. And I will use this as my sky part. Then for the ground part I will again take this z component and multiply it with negative 1. So now I would basically have negative values at the top and positive values at the bottom. Then I will use another smooth step node. Take this and feed it into this value. Again, I want to control this max value from the details panel, so I will create another scalar parameter. Let's call it Nadir Blend. Give default value of 0.5 this time and feed it into the max socket. And I will use this as my ground part. Alright, I have sky part and ground part. Only thing missing is the horizon. And for that, I will just add these two together. And let's just visualize it and you can see that I have black values at the horizon. I want inverse of this so I will just take this output and feed it into one minus node. One minus at the name suggests will simply go one minus this input. Let's just visualize that and you can see that I have white values at the horizon and I would also like to control this blend as well and for that I will use power node. Power node will simply go base raised to this exponent, take this output and feed it into base. And now the power node will simply darken the values which are less than 1 as I increase the exponent. And I would also like to control this exponent from the details panel so you guessed it, I'll create another scalar parameter node. Let's call it horizon blend, give default value of 20. And feed it into the exponent and I will use this as horizon part. Alright I have sky, horizon and ground. Now it's time to color them and I want to control the color from the details panel as well so let's create a vector parameter. 
Let's call it sky color. Let's give some default bluish color. And multiply it with my sky part. And I'll do the same thing for horizon and ground as well. So another vector parameter. Let's call it horizon color. Let's give some default value. And multiply it with the horizon part. Same thing for the ground. So again, let's create another vector parameter. Let's call it ground color. Give some default color. And multiply it with the ground part. Now let's add these three together. And now due to all this addition, this final output may go beyond one. I don't want that, so I will just take this output and feed it into saturate node, which is just a fancy name for a node that just clamps the values between zero and one. Then let's take this output and feed it into this emissive color socket and save our shader and you should also hit the like button and now i have this nice custom skybox pretty cool and don't go anywhere yet there's still some bonus content here now this logic will serve as a base for more complex effects so let's turn this logic into a single node for that i'll just select all these and then unselect my parameters then right click and select collapse to function it will ask me where i want to save this subgraph so let's create a new folder let's call it shader lib and i will call it simple sky and hit save it will open up in a new window i'll just dock it here here it's a bit of mess so i'll just take this this is my zenith blend, so in the details panel, let's call it zenith. Then this is my sky color, so I'll rename it to sky color. Similarly, this is my horizon blend, so I'll rename it to horizon. This is my horizon color, so horizon color. This is Nadir Blend, so let's call it Nadir. And this is my ground color, so let's call it ground color. Then this output, let's rename it to color. Also, this normalized nodes output will be handy to calculate sky UVs to create like stars procedurally. So let's take this output and feed it into function output node and I'll rename it to let's say sky direction and save my subgraph and the cool thing about this is in any shader I could just find my simple sky subgraph and simply drag it in and I would have a node that outputs the sky color and sky direction for more complex effect and I only scratch the surface on skyboxes and shaders if there is enough interest, I will definitely cover more complex skybox effect in the future using Unreal. In the meantime, you can check out this series for some inspiration, and I'll see you in the next one.